Good evening, everybody. Hey, I'm looking for one thing on here. I know some of you will be on in a minute. Uh, it's Tuesday. I don't even know what day. It's March 9th, right? March 9th, yes. And uh, give me just a second. We had just finished dinner, and I was wanting to see if I could find my... Uh, I'll just bring this. I don't have many prayer requests right now, but I wanted to make sure to have some pen and paper if anybody gave me any prayer requests tonight. Um, if you have them, hey, good evening, Kathy and Bill. I would expect Bill's with you, Kathy, because usually it pops up and says Bill. Um, hey, uh, if you have prayer requests, put them up earlier, please, or text me. Uh, and if you don't know my number, email me, but you should know my number. You should be able to get my number. Uh, but, uh, good evening, Phyllis. Hey, I'm glad you're here. But if you do have prayer requests, I, you know, I try to collect them. And if I can, and if anything comes up earlier in the week, then I can, um, I can get them, get the names in for the prayers for the next, uh, for it to be in uh, the Sunday prayers. Hey, I wanted to share. My butterfly. I have been working. I've been enjoying coloring it different times at night. And I have completed it. I think I'm going to leave the white spaces where they are. And I love all the different colors. And it was very fun. I will be picking a less complicated one to do. I hope you all have your uh, butterflies. Hey, good evening, Frank and Martha. Uh, I have more that I will have to hand out. Lord, help me if I get sick this weekend or anything else happens. So we will have drive through communion this Sunday, God willing. And the creek don't rise. That's what we'd say where I'm from. God willing, the creek don't rise. Because have you ever had just a really stressful day? Well, that's been my day. And I'm still recovering from it. Um, Samuel had his first car accident this morning, and that's just, has still upset me to no end but he's okay it was his fault we have a really busy road just right outside you turn right out of where we live and you come up just a short distance up to a, a stop sign it's uh just a two-way stop sign and the traffic coming this way we live we're just half a mile maybe from the middle school grade school and high school they're all together I have told Samuel over and over again, you know how this is with your kids. I have said, Samuel, when you go into school, that road is super busy. There is tons of cars. Go the round, go the back, go around the back way. It'll only take you a few minutes more, and you're less likely to have an accident. Well, what do you do? He's like, Well, Mom, I've driven it other times, so it's not busy. And I just thought I could do it. I'm like, Samuel, you haven't even had your license a year. You're not an experienced driver. Anyway, <clears throat> fortunately, and he got antsy and thought the person behind him wanted to go. And we're like, you cannot worry about the person behind you. You can, I don't care if they scream. I don't care if they flash you. I don't, you know what I mean with your lights. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't care if they honk their horn. I don't care what they do. You cannot, you cannot let people affect you to the point that you will have an accident and um anyway he just he doesn't have enough driving experience that so anyway i felt every emotion i can feel today <sighs> sorry I, i'm still just I, I had a delayed reaction i really got really you know how, i don't know well i never feel i mean i feel stress but like i just felt all the stress today like just it just like overwhelmed me and i'm also trying to make sure that everything gets clean out of my mom's house i'm not there and there were some things with that today and just that between that and my mom's house and samuel in the accident i just stressed me no end but i'm okay i'm okay i just you know i'm not very i'm not a poker face and i am not a liar I just, I just, I can't fake anything. I'm just, I'm just not, I can't do it. So anyway, I figure I might as well just own it with you up front instead of acting like I'm my normal cheery self. Or at least I think I'm my normal, whatever. I, you know, how we all think of ourselves in certain ways. So anyway, <sighs> sorry. 
but on the butterflies. I know Frank's got a lot. Um, so I had an idea. If we get a bunch of these, like if you've done several already, okay, what I would ask you to do is, because I've asked for them to be cut out, but what I would ask you to do is, um, Laura had an accident and I totaled her car. Wow, Betty. Yeah, we're, uh, fortunately, I don't think his car is totaled and we had good coverage for the, the other driver. So they're covered and they both have State Farm and uh, actually, I'm not doing this as an advertiser, but Rita is our agent from CERT. We've been with State Farm decades, but, because, and you know, we lived in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois, home with State Farm. So, I mean, you know, half our members worked at State Farm, but we were with them before that. But anyway, um, but Samuel will have to pay for the repairs himself. So we're just, we have a friend who has a car shop and uh, we'll see what he says about it because it's the the door is a four-door car and the door behind the driver's um, door is smashed in pretty good and smashed up. So it's going to have to be, and it's hard, it can't. I think it, he was able to drive it to school, he was able to drive it home, and he'll be able to drive it to get it worked on, but I'm not, it's not, it, it's got to be fixed. It can't, he can't be driving it, so... Anyway, but yes, and my, my brother and I went through a car accident when I was a senior, and I was telling, I think I was telling Cheryl Maples today, um, we were on a through street one block from our church. We were going to help with a pancake breakfast, and this, uh, we were in high school, and this boy who was in high school too, he, um, he, he didn't wait, and he came out and hit us. In, in our, on my brother's side when my brother was driving, I hit my head on the windshield and I hit my head so hard that three days later, my eyes both caved in and turned black and blue and I had, literally, I looked like a raccoon for two months with br bruises the whole way around here like this. I would sometimes wear sunglasses to school because I looked so bad. And I had just gotten my senior picture taken that week before we had the accident. I'm telling you, it was just unbelievable. They thought I had broken something, but thank God I didn't break anything. But I said to my brother, I talked to my brother today, and I said, you know, I was scared to get back in a car for a year. I mean, I still drove, and I still got in a car. And I said, it wasn't your fault, you know, but it, it stuff like that just can do a number on you. So anyway, I'm just eternally grateful to God that Samuel's okay and that the lady was okay, and she had a child in the back seat, and the child was okay. I mean, all of that could it could have gone so bad, it could have gone so much worse. And the policeman was really helpful, and you know, but you know, it just I woke up to that, and I was just it just affected my whole day, you know, because you think about your kids, and you think about your family, and you think about your close friends, and then when something like that happens, I mean, it just you know, it just remind you that life is short and um, you've got to, you just got to be thankful for every day. Every day you have because we ha we don't have, nobody's getting out of here alive. So, uh, hey, good evening, Cheryl. I'm glad you're on here. Um, good evening, and Kathy shows back up again. So, okay. Anyway, I hope you're having a better day than I've had. I hope you will color butterflies, but I never finished this. And what I meant to say was, if you like to color, and you're willing to color one and leave, don't cut it out and write a little note to say thank you to the teachers and the staff. And my brain is going blank. I say it all the time at our local elementary school. What I'm hoping to do after school, I'll, this Thursday I will take their the uh, backpack for lunches. It's starting back this week. Uh, on Thursday, uh, tomorrow they'll set out, and uh, Thursday they will put them together. I don't know who's had their shots or if anybody's willing to come help. We wear masks usually, um, but I, I deliver to two schools and uh, Moreland, and I'll deliver to Moreland, and I'm going to talk to the um, counselor who comes and gets it from me. Well, Gail Harville gave me the idea. She said, hey, you know, we have different churches that sponsor us and they bring us snacks and they write us cards and they 
you know, and the teachers and the aides and the staff there, they've, they've had such a rough year. I mean, you think about all they've been through. I mean, we've all been through it, but so anyway, I thought if we have enough butterflies, if everybody could just write a little note, say, thank you, Moreland Elementary teachers, staff, you know, we love you or whatever, and bring those with you. I'll collect those. And then I'm going to find out from the counselor what would be good snacks to, that are safe, that they can have there, um, that I can drop off in a couple weeks. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping to drop it off. Be, well, I'll drop it off before their spring break. But I want to collect some butterflies so they can put them up. And so if you can help me out, if you're willing, if you already have some colored and you're willing and you still, and you haven't cut it out, if you have cut it out, you could write on the back of it. But if you, you know, if you have it and you still have it on the paper and would be willing to write a note, um, that would be really awesome. Cause I would love to share that with them along with some snacks from the church. So, um, just something to let them know we're thinking of them. And I'm really glad. I appreciate Gail giving me that great idea and we will find more ways to be supportive of the school and the staff uh in through this end of the year and then next year you know to be more of a partner with them and if anybody wants to work wants to help me with that at all please let me know um i would greatly appreciate your help for that okay all right today is tuesday the third week of Lent. my all in the devotional steadfast love and it's called new life the scripture is first peter 1 3 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ by his great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead and then this is what henry and allen wrote this is from his book called peace work on page 63 the central message of the gospel is that god sent his beloved son to forgive our sins and make us new people, able to live in this world without being paralyzed by self-rejection, remorse, and guilt. Wow, I think that is powerful. To live in this world, being new people without being paralyzed by self-rejection, remorse, and guilt. And then the author writes, new birth, living hope. Those are words that bring new meaning to life. When we find that life in Jesus, I've heard it said, if Jesus isn't real, nothing matters. If Jesus is real, nothing else matters. St. Paul puts it this way, for me to live is Christ. While Lent is indeed our time to remember the sin that brought Jesus to the cross, it is even more our time to think on God's wondrous love and the new birth into a living hope we have been given in the resurrection. Jesus just didn't die on Good Friday, rise up again on Easter and leave us behind. Jesus died on Good Friday, rose again on Easter, and came back to life for us. He came to breathe his life into us, to give us a new birth and living hope that no one could ever take away. Wow. I think that's really amazing to think about it, that Jesus came back for us, to life for us, for all generations, for all people, for all time, because of God so loving the world that he gave us Jesus. And then I love that it says he came to breathe his life. Remember at, on Easter day when he goes and encounters the disciples and he breathes on them, it says he breathes on them. He breathes on them his life to give a new birth, it says, and living hope that no one could ever take away. That is just I got to underline that. I'm going to read that again and again. Could it ever take away? And the little prayer is, Dear Heavenly Father, now when I hear the happy birthday song sung, may it forever remind me of the day I was given new life in your son, Jesus. Amen. I think that is just a wonderful devotion, and I really needed that today. Reminding me that to not be paralyzed, you know, when you go through stress, when you go through hard times, it is easy to be paralyzed. And it's, and I said to David, I said, you know, we can't not have Samuel drive. It's like when you fall off a horse. He's got to keep driving. He's got to keep learning. Um, he, he needs some more guidance. Um, you know, he, I mean, he, 
so fortunate today, so fortunate. But he's got to keep driving because he, you know, if you, you know, like I said about me being scared, but I got in that car every time for a whole year. I was scared and I knew it, but I eventually got over it. You know, I eventually, the fear went away and I got more comfortable. I will tell you that, so I grew up in a rural area. Um, I was, I was a scared driver. I, my, you know, I grew up on a farm. My brothers all learned to drive. I did not learn to drive. I was terrible. When I had driver's ed the first time, I almost put us in a ditch in the little town where my high school was. And we started with, we started with a hundred points or zero. I'm trying to remember. But even if we started at zero, my, I remember this. I got so many infractions the first day I drove in driver's ed because we, we had a car and we had a wonderful, funny, sarcastic, great teacher. Um, but I had minus 270 points for driving the first day I drove in um, class. <laughs> when I think about that, oh my goodness, my goodness. I was scared to get on the highway, so I drove in this little town for my class and back roads and everything. Um, you know, I just, I just, you know, I was just scared. And um, I, I, when I moved to Atlanta, the first, I, so I lived in Kansas City in my 20s, and I drove there, and I drove all over. Um, I lived in Chicago when I went to seminary, and then, and then in Berkeley when I went to Pacific Lutheran. I drove, and Chicago is where I learned to be an assertive driver. Laura Miller, if you're listening to this, I did not say aggressive. I said assertive. And I knew I had conquered it when one day I was in downtown Chicago. I had been stuck at this light for like three, three times because there was all this traffic. And, you know, that the big buses in Chicago. Uh, now I'm sure they do in New York City, but the double, there's the double buses and they have the extended thing in the middle so that when they go around a curve the bus can go around the curve I don't know if you've ever been in one of those but I've been in them they're amazing but anyway so there was this bus that wanted to turn in front of me but it wasn't their turn and I stood my ground and I was in my little car at my Honda Civic wagon and they were little in those days and I pulled up and went through when that bus was trying to take it I'm like no sir it is not your turn I am going. So I learned to be an assertive driver. But then, you know, I, so then we moved, we, we were in Arizona. I drove there. I drove, I drove a little in the Bay Area, but we took the rapid transit a lot. So I didn't have to drive there as much. I mean, it, cause traffic in the Bay Area is horrific. It's just, wow. It's, it's amazing. But I drove it, but not a lot, you know. When we moved to Atlanta, I was just like, whoa. And I was scared. I was scared to drive in Atlanta, I'll tell you. And I remember the first time I went up Spaghetti Junction, you know, when you go, oh my gosh. And it was at night and it was dark. And I was just inside. I was like, ooh, can I do this? Can I do this? And I'd already been driving a while, you know. But I made it through and I got more comfortable. Then we moved back to Illinois. And I mean, I drove the highways there, but they're nowhere near busy like like here. Nowhere near busy. Um, so when we moved back here, I had to start all over again with this like, like every little bump and every little thing I hit would just internally freak me out, you know, just give me a really hard time. And, um, but I, I, I just, I think doing hospice and driving literally like the whole area, like all the way out to Buford, all that way out, I would drive regularly and drive back roads and drive all the highways. I mean, I, 75 is still not my favorite. I'll drive it, but I don't enjoy it. I mean, I'll drive into the city, but I really don't enjoy it. But um, 285, I'm much more comfortable on, even though that's a crazy highway too. But, but I've gotten, I haven't gotten complacent, but I've gotten to the point that everything doesn't internally freak me out. And I'm, much calmer about it and I actually for the most part enjoy driving and driving at Griffin going is really great coming home is a little bit more of a issue but it's still nothing compared to when I drove from Lawrenceville or I drove um, hey Laura in April I don't know if Laura heard my comment about Chicago and the buses in Chicago and learning to be an assertive driver but it makes me think of her 
because I'm sure she learned to drive there. I'm sure she did. So, because Laura can drive anywhere. She's amazing. Because the one thing I can't drive still, and I'll never be able to drive, is in the mountains. I just cannot. I would rather pull the car over and walk for days than drive a car through mountain. When we move back here, we have friends that live, they live down here now, they're from here, but they uh, lived in outside Nashville, Tennessee. They were half an hour on the other side. And so I said, hey, and we stayed overnight with them and I said, okay, I'd be glad to pay you if you will drive my car um, and get me through the mountains. And she did that. So I know, I know, Laura, you are amazing. That's what I said, you can drive yourself anywhere. You are totally, totally, totally my hero for driving. You are just amazing. So uh, I, can, I can drive anywhere but the mountains. I, I just, it just causes me too much. It stresses me out too much. I can't do it. But I can drive in cities, no problem. And it's a good thing. I mean, I, it's, it's a nice freedom to have to be able to do that, you know. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to drive home. But I know you drove all the way to Chicago. You do it all the time. But I, I can't. I can't get through the mountains on my own. I just, mm -mm, it's too much for me. I usually try to take a nap when we go through the mountains. I love them, but I don't enjoy, I, I don't like that when you come down the hill in Tennessee. Yeah, I don't, the big mountain. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm -mm, no. Anyway, we all have our things, right? We all have our things. So, but okay. I wanted to also read you a little prayer from uh, Come to the Light, the Daily Prayers for Lent. Many of you got that. So, okay. So the one for tonight. Matthew 18, 34, 35. And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Our Father who art in heaven, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. How often do these words come from my lips without their finding a home within my heart? Though I always want you to forgive me to the extent that I have forgiven or not forgiven another. I have found this parable to be troubling. The reference to torture is harsh. What the discomfort has brought to me brought me to a new awareness. When I pray the words that you have taught us, may the forgiveness I offer another be rooted in love and not in fear of what I may receive in return from you. Amen. Well, that's powerful too. And it really does make you think that we need to, I talk, talk about this a lot, that forgiveness isn't always easy. And that I really think the reason Jesus says 70 times 70 forgiving is because there are some things that we think we've forgiven and we really haven't. And when we think of that, whatever happened, and we get upset, we, we're not over it. And um, forgiveness can take time and praying and asking God to help us to let it go and to forgive it. And um, forgiveness doesn't mean getting even. It doesn't mean that we win. It doesn't mean that it can be taken away. But forgiveness means that we have let it go, that we have put the burden down, that we quit carrying the anger that we have from it. And, and I truly believe this, that when you carry anger towards somebody in your heart, they win. Because they take away from your joy, they rob you of your peace, and you give them more power over you because you let them in a way win because they, they got you so mad that you, that you give them power over how you act and how you feel. And being able to, with God's power, with the Holy Spirit, and I really believe that there's been Things in my life that I truly had to pray for a long time about forgiving people and letting go of things. And, um, and when, when I thought of, and when I know it's really worked is when I'll think of, if it comes up in my mind and I don't, I don't feel up hurt or angry or pain about it anymore. And I know that is that God's spirit has moved through me and worked through me and helped me to let go of it. And I think it's an amazing feeling to feel that way. And I needed to be reminded of that today, too. Uh, so, because family, you love them, but it's not always easy, right? There's always plenty of, and I'm not talking about Samuel. I'm talking about <laughs> having brothers and loving them, but being a different person and just, just trying to do your best by each other. And uh, that's really, really important to me. Um, 
to be able to do that. So, well, listen, I, um, Cheryl and Vaughn, we pray for safe travel for them. They're going on a quick trip this weekend. Pray for Phyllis, safe travel for a short little jaunt. Um, pray, I'm trying to think. I don't, I, because my prayer book, I put it up. It's in my stuff. I have to look for it. I'll get it out tomorrow night. Be praying for Debbie Sackmar and her family at the loss of her dad. Alan Tufferella at the loss of his son. Um, it's almost the anniversary effect of May. It's close, I think, if it hasn't already happened. Um, when we lost Jane Mache and um, um, oh boy, I can't think of Carol. Um, mm, my brain just had a brain blip. Um, but a first anniversary of the, uh, a couple of our members last year in March. Um, so be thinking of uh, Carol Tackett Marvin of Marvin of Marvin's death and Jane, they died. I believe they died in the same week. Um, and I still remember Jane's going away party last year and how wonderful that was and getting to talk to her while she was in California. But she, yes, Marvin, yeah, Betty, yeah, thank you. I did remember that. And um, so anyway, the anniversaries are, are in the next week or so. So if you'll just remember Carol. I don't have Carol's address, I hope I, I've connected with her several times, but she lives with her daughter now in North, North uh, Georgia, and they don't have good internet service access. Um, and, uh, but I will, I will try to call her and check on her tomorrow. Um, I should tell you, uh, I had to have a COVID test today. My doctor's office said if I wanted to see my doctor next week for my semi-annual appointment, I needed to get one because even though I'm, 98% sure I had stomach flu, the, um, I had a fever, and, and a number of the things I had were also um, signs of having COVID, although I haven't lost my taste or any smell or anything, but um, so I went to get that today, and the last time I went was months and months ago. I've had this my fourth test, and it was so different because, one, I did it online, and they said, you don't need an appointment. You just come show your little QR code. They'll pull you up because I was already in the system for Henry County. Um, they said, come between eight and one. So I went right away this morning, got that done. Um, before there was tons of people working and tons of cars. I was the only car. One pulled out right before I got there. Um, and um, hey, Tim. And um, when I went to get the, the uh, test, I said to the lady, well, do you, the last time I had gone to get a COVID test, they had me put it up both sides of my nose and, um, they, they've changed. They've learned and learned and learned doing this. And, um, yeah, I'm glad to Janet. I'm glad to. Um, so I said, well, do you want me, the last time they had me do it myself on both sides, you know, so I could get enough stuff to be able to do it. And I said, well, so you want me to do it? She goes, oh, well, you know, it's up to you. We can do it or. And I was like, wow, so now the, they go in either way. So I said, no, nah, I'll do it. She, I said, uh, do you want me to do both sides? Well, she said, well, it depends on how much you get. If you get a good amount out of one side, then you don't need to do that. So anyway, I'm a sneezer and I have my allergies, of course, are acted out by mom medicine and I'm doing stuff. But uh, when I put it up there, while I was still up there, I sneezed very rapidly about seven, eight times in a row, just ch -ch -ch. So it had really irritated whatever was up there, but I got enough out of the one side. So I'll know Thursday. So I'm working at home uh, uh, tomorrow. I'll be here, but I'll be out as soon as I get, I should know on Thursday. So I will be out because um, I don't want to give anybody anything and um, just want to keep everybody healthy. So, okay. All right. Uh, Timothy Schwartz, I'm glad you're on here. April Kennedy, I'm happy to see you. We will have drive through communion unless God willing and the creek don't rise, as I we always said growing up. So, 10, uh, 1130, 1230 Sunday. Bring your butterflies if you got them colored. As I said, if you're willing to write a note to the teachers and staff, and you can do one of those thanking them for all they've been through at Moreland Elementary. We'll use that with snacks. We're going to get them safe snacks to give them. 
Otherwise, you can bring them in if you if you can cut them out. That would be great. I'll have more patterns, different type types. If you really like to color, I've got I think six or seven different kinds. Dale Harville gave me some different ones. Um, so I you all had them in your Lenten package if you want to color those. They don't have to be gloriously pretty. I just had a lot of fun, um, and I want to start another one now. Um, I just do it if I'm watching TV. I'll I'll color on it. So. Um, but, and second session in Griffin, this, uh, second week, so that's great, and we will be working on putting together something to thank Moreland Elementary for all they do, the whole teacher staff, um, there, thank them all, and, um, if you have any prayer requests, please let me know, um, including for yourself, I'm happy to know. You can reach me tonight or tomorrow if you need me, or tomorrow or Thursday. Um, but thanks for being with me tonight. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Sorry about coming down from the stress. Can, can you download butterflies? Sure. I mean, do you, I could send you patterns if you want me to, Betty. But if you have some, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, the ones we got. I don't know where Gail. Gail probably got hers offline and. The one I gave in the Lenten bags was one I had kept that I liked from other years. So, um, so if you, and again, if you cut them out and you want to use it for Moreland, you can write a note on the back. Or, but if you haven't cut it out, you can write the note to Moreland here. But I'm going to take as many as I can get. Uh, we want to do something with them for Easter, for our outdoor Easter service. So, uh, we'll see what we can come up with. So, um, but yeah, you can sure you can download them. You can pick different kinds. You can color them however you want. Um, just bring them back to us. We need them in the next several weeks. We it would help to have them by Palm Sunday when we gather. Um, but if you want to drop a few off that week, that'll probably work. But um, and again, if there's more, you know, we can always send them to the school or things like that. So um, you know, there's always room for another colored butterfly. So okay. That's it for tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm really glad you're here. I'm hoping tomorrow will be a much less stressful day. And um, just giving thanks to God that Sam's okay. And that the lady and the child are okay too. That nobody was harmed. And um, um, just, just very, very, very grateful tonight. So, all right. I wish you all a wonderful night. A great day tomorrow. And those of you who watch tomorrow, blessings on your day tomorrow too. I hope for those of you who are trying to get shots that you'll be able to get an appointment soon. I know we tried, Sam, Christopher and I are in the database and we've been invited because of Christopher's intellectual disabilities and that me as his caregiver for us to go. But the Macon spot when I pulled it up said there was no more um, appointments for the month of March. So I'm gonna start looking around and see what I can find. So Christopher I can, and I can get in and get our first shot. So. Um, Anyway, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget our book group. We meet tomorrow night at, seven, at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I uh, will send out a note to you all tonight for the Zoom. And um, see you tomorrow night here online. Take care. Good night.